Hi, Stay Paid listeners. Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid. Quick warning before this podcast begins. It does contain explicit language, so if you're driving around with the little ones in the car, you might want to save this one for yourself because our guest today, Anthony Sarandria, is absolutely crushing it in digital marketing and Facebook advertising. He is driving a lot of leads for his businesses through thinking about the psychology of the people that he's trying to reach, not just selling the product that you sell, right, but actually thinking about the basic human needs of the people people that you're trying to reach. So give it a listen. Let us know what you think. Head on over to iTunes and leave us a comment so that we know that you heard this and enjoy the episode. From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Steik, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. Josh is very serious right now. Why so serious? Why? What's up, Luke? What is up? We're what here. Episode is, what, what episode is this of Quarantine Stay Paid? Oh, wow. How many episodes have we recorded in Five. quarantine? This is six. Six? Gotta be six. Six. Yeah. I am going uh, stir crazy like the rest of the world. And I still go into my office every day. I mean, I'm me and a couple other people. I know you you come into the office upstairs <clears throat> too, but. Well, we, we were talking before the podcast and we're like, you know, we ran out of things to do at night. Like, what are we going to do? Everyone got really sad. We started. To, we were laughing and having a good time. And then he said, yeah, producer Andrew is like, yes, it's so lonely. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all right, man, because here's what we're doing. We're listening to podcasts. We're trying, we're, we're, we're learning new things. We're trying to push our business forward. We have a guest today on the podcast that's going to talk about a topic that really and I hate using this phrase because I've heard this phrase about a thousand times in the last four weeks, but, but is more relevant now than ever. And that's like digital advertising and reaching people online. We have uh, internet usage has spiked like 40%. Yeah. The amount of people on social media and on the internet now, and obviously all the streaming services has risen incredibly during this time. But our guest today is Anthony Serendrea. He is recognized as one of the top lead generators in the world, running a team that specializes in driving thousands of inbound phone calls daily across a number of verticals, including health, finance, legal, and education. He's consistently featured as one of the top under 30 year old entrepreneurs and was featured alongside Snapchat's founder, Evan Spiegel, as one of the entrepreneurs that are changing the world. As a matter of fact, his email to us about coming on the show said, I started off door knocking and built my company to $100,000 a day with over a million customers a year. Anthony, welcome to the podcast. Well, boys, thanks for having me. Yeah, man, it's awesome to have you on. I'm excited to, you know, get into your brain and figure out, obviously, the number one question Josh and I get all the time is how do you consistently generate leads? Like that is what we get all the time from the clients that we work with here at Reminder Media and then people and listeners to our show. But just take a you know, few minutes, introduce yourself to the audience, let them know your story, how you got to where you're at today. Yeah, for sure. I mean, at a 10,000 foot level, you know, I... I I started off door knocking, literally going door to door, selling uh, solar hot water systems in the uh, 120 degree Arizona summer. Uh, that was, uh, you know, you, you really built a lot of character. It's a dry my... heat. It's a dry heat, dude. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, stop right? this baby, Anthony. It's, it's like 80 in Pennsylvania. <laughs> So I'm from I'm from New York, so I know the uh, the moist heat as well too, and I'll, I'll the dry 120 is fucking miserable as well too. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, both bad, but uh, yeah, went went from there, and honestly, uh, you know, I, I saw a guy. It, it sounds funny. I saw someone, you know, literally shooting hoops on a Tuesday uh, during the day, and I was like, I want to do what the hell that guy does because I'm out here busting my ass for fucking you know 12 hour days, sweating like a dog. Uh, and, and, and really grinding it out, you know, and taking a lot of shit, literally. And, uh, and, um, and I asked what he did. He said he worked on the internet. I never, I, I hated being in front of computers. I hated the idea of being locked down and not being able to talk to people and around and things like that. So I asked to intern for him for free. So I was working and then, you know, going to learn the internet from this guy, I eventually got, got decent enough where I really uh, built myself a, a full-time job. I like to joke. It's not like, like, when did you start your business? Like I, I was just, it was, I got enough project work essentially to, you know, call it a business, but it was really, you know, I, I built myself in a job. Um, and then from there, I, I get to really experience a lot of the benefits of the internet, which is really just 
uh, infinite scalability, touch, not being tie bound, time bound. So while you and I are talking right now, you know, we're converting customers where before I had to be knocking on doors every 10 seconds and, and you know, uh, 10 minutes, I should say, and things like that in order to generate revenue. So all these things became really addicting to me uh, around the internet. And uh, I got really excited by it. So I said, shit, I want uh, all my friends and family are, are off, uh, uh, you know, going to work nine to fives and, and I don't get to see them. I'm kind of not bored at home, but uh, you know, I said, oh, fuck it. Let me, let me start hiring some of them. So I started bringing them on as I got more busy and grew it to eventually, you know, hired, I want to say four or five friends, two of my family members. And um, you, you know, we were growing pretty rapidly and now, you know, you fast forward today, uh, we essentially are a uh, lending tree. If a lot of people on the podcast are familiar lending tree for a more subprime individuals. So we really sit, we attract and generate a customer's interest enough to fill out an application, make a phone call, fill out a form. And then we send it to like a Geico or something like that to do the underwriting and the actual work. So uh, the, the, uh, the, the back end of actual fulfillment of the products uh, uh, we're essentially partnering with companies on. And uh, we're just focusing on really at the end of the day, just being a marketing machine, marketing generation, co generating company that just drives a, a very high number of customers. Uh, you know, a couple, couple thousand per day, as, as you guys mentioned to uh, two different financial services. Wow. So is that mainly Facebook? Is it all digital marketing platforms? I know obviously Facebook has more than just on Facebook ads. They, you sure. know, they have their whole ad network. Are you working um, on multiple social media as well as search and Google or like how extensive is that? Yeah. So when we first started, it, it, it was, you know, 95, maybe even 99% Facebook, Instagram, you know, to, to your point. Today, the breakup looks like it's uh, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, even TikTok. We, we had a, a, we're on a, a YouTube, native ads. So we touch a, a bunch of different, and you know, we can, we can dive into any of those in particular, but we, we touch or are, are testing just about every platform or um, uh, platform out there right now. Uh, and Facebook has, has really become less than 50% of our traffic, which has uh, been very exciting for us, not because Facebook's bad, just in the diverse, diversification play and, and, and things like that on other platforms, which is, you know, a lot of businesses run, online businesses run fully on Facebook, which, you know, I was always scared shitless of because it felt like a, uh, you know, a one-legged table that at any time could just topple over. So, uh, you know, really proud to say that today that, that it, you know, it's, we're sustainably on multiple different platforms, but yeah, especially starting out of the gate, Facebook was a great place to start and it still is. It's still, like I said, uh, that 50% market, that's still a majority stake in, in actual traffic coming through. It's so we have, a, we have a lot of people in the podcast now because we work with them. Um, you know, these are real estate agents, financial advisors, insurance, yeah. they're like service-based sales professionals. They're running Facebook ads or they're trying to get into doing uh, more of that. What's like the biggest mistake? Because we've been doing advertising on Facebook and social media for, I guess, the last six years now. Yeah. And we made some big mistakes in the beginning. <laughs> I'm sure. curious. You know, I hate to say it with Luke here, but wasted some money. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but you have to do that to learn. So what are, what are some of the biggest mistakes that people make whenever they start off? They say, oh, Facebook, I can get leads from it. What yeah, I think, that, I think there's a handful of things. I think one is thinking you're going to launch an ad talking about the office cat and all of a sudden you're going to be a millionaire. And, and it's funny because people hear like all the, you know, all these Instagram, Facebook stories and success stories. And they're like, well, I fucking put something up there and I didn't make, I put spent 20 bucks. I didn't make a thousand bucks that this thing fucking sucks. So a lot of times it's, it's really, uh, uh, you know, that coupled with trying to out far out smart Facebook, excuse me. So what I mean by that is uh, placing the pixel correctly where you're teaching Facebook what you actually want. So are you, do you want to contact, do you want someone to call in? Are you sending that, that information as an actual conversion back to Facebook? So Facebook can start doing its job, which they do their job way better than you and I could ever guess. Let's lay our Oprah interest over this guy over. They have to be 27. Like Facebook's algorithms are way more advanced than, than I think people give it credit for. Or a lot of people that are just getting started off. Um, uh, so those are some major ones. And what I'm, what, you know, I guess the takeaways to expand on those are uh, realizing you're not going to be a millionaire overnight. So you see it losing money, but, you really need to do that in order to start training the pixel and start getting more ma mature on your campaigns, start building up social proof, things like that. If you ask me tactically for a real estate agent or for an insurance broker, uh, there's really two easy wins. I think one is that gets ignored more than anything. Mo they're so simple, but monitoring comments. So responding to comments, hide, mm -hmm. hide, ban and delete bad comments, uh, which is hilarious. It'd be like, if I told you you could get rid of a Yelp review, uh, a negative Yelp review. That's essentially what Facebook comments are. So <clears throat> managing comments, responding to them uh, and, and messages very timely, like within a minute, if you can. 
and then really retargeting campaigns, which is has value outside of just a machine dr driving customers like it, like that. But it, you know what it looks like is if you came to my site, I'm an insurance agent, and then all of a sudden you see my my shit following you everywhere, and you're thinking about okay, do I do I use Anthony? Um, you're I probably look bigger than life, and and there there's intangible value to that, whether it's referrals, offline things like that, converting you, keeping you on as, as a as you know as as a client of mine for longer versus you thinking of switching or. Or, or getting, you know, last, um, what's the, uh, buyer's remorse or something like that. Like those are two just simple things that I think most people just get overwhelmed with the dream of like, I'm going to launch a Facebook ad and drive a Lamborghini in two weeks versus like, okay, let's, let's just do the, some of the simple things that, that actually have value outside of just logging in and seeing, okay, how much money did I make with, what, right after I launched the ad or something like that? Yeah. I think, I think it's so good. so good, man. And yeah. it's what's interesting is Josh and I just did a Facebook webinar not too long ago that um, you know people actually can check out on our YouTube channel with Reminder Media. But you know we talk about like don't underestimate the intangible value of the branding that you get from yeah. having your face follow people around the web. And I think people connect the dots more when you know you talk to them. Hey, look, do you believe in referral marketing? Which everybody knows in small business, if you're not you know doing referral marketing, if you're not touching base with your database to build that mind share, you're going to lose. And Facebook is not the end all be all, but it's another avenue to help you do that. Yeah. But it's like you said, I think people slowly spin their way out of the business because they test something, they expect to get instant gratification and they quit. And yeah. it's like with anything, it's the consistency. I'm curious to hear budget wise, what you would recommend you know, starting out, if you're getting started out on Facebook, because these are the type of questions we get. Well, how much should I spend a day? And we all know with marketing, well, you spend if you're, you know, if you're making $2, you keep that for every dollar you spend, you dump money yeah. in. But what's a good benchmark for people? Yeah, I mean, uh, you guys know, just, there's no perfect answer. But if I were to say, you know, I would, I would 2x what your lifetime value of your customer is per day if you can. So that might not make sense necessarily for a real estate agent. I make 10 grand commission or something like that. <laughs> but let's just say I'm selling coffee cups. Here's a great example of some, or whatever, fucking uh, uh, duvet covers. I'm selling, uh, you know, bed covers and they're a hundred bucks each. And I know my margin on that is 60 bucks or whatever it is. I'd 2X that. So I'd spend, 120, I'd spend 120 bucks a day on that. And really the goal is, you know, can I drive one sale in the first week I'm, I'm launching? One or two sales. So I spend, you know, five, 600 bucks. It's naive for me to be like, spend $5,000 before you get a sale and just keep pumping it, keep spending. That's dumb. But, right. you know, if, if really, I could, if, if there's some life there, like really for me, it's below the 50% mark. So if, if I spent 120 and made one sale at 60 bucks, I'm not talking day one. I'm just saying like over a week or two and you feel like you're giving it a good shake and all this stuff. That I think is a healthy amount to where it's like, okay, there's some shit we can work with here. Like there's, there's bound to be some fat to trim. There's bound to be some good segments to scale on things like that. So if you ask me, I, I you know, it, it totally depends on the person, their risk tolerance, their, their, you know, what, what they're able to set aside and shit like that. But hopefully that's a generic enough, but specific, specific enough example for someone to get a takeaway and be like, got it. Okay. I should probably be spending a hundred bucks a day or 50, you know, 10 bucks a day is, is, you know, you're probably wasting everyone's time. It's going to take you fucking a month to get any statistical significance. That's very important to look at. So we look at, I would look at ad spend as fuel, right? So if you only, you know, put in a dollar of gas and you're like trying to make it to California, which is, you know, you want to be on the beach hanging out, uh, not now, but um, you know, it, you, you're not going to make it. So at the same time too, do, do, am I telling you to uncharted territories, put in, you know, fill up the full tank put a hundred bucks in, maybe not, but you know, you might throw 20 in there or something like that. So enough fuel to get you going. So, and then as you feel like you're more and more on the right path, you start seeing signs that, Oh, California is this way, that way, stop at the gas station, fill up a little bit more and then a little bit more, a little bit more along the way. And that this is a silly little dumbass analogy I just made up, but hopefully give, give some, uh, some clarity to, as, as you get going off the ground. Cause there's no perfect answer. I can't be like spend a hundred bucks a day, you know, or whatever. Spend enough to get you to where you need to go next, then just spend more and more and more. I was, I was hoping Simple for the equation. answer. No, I actually think you're, you're spot on. We saw that in our own spin. What, what did we come up with, Josh? We recommend it. You know, we upped it about 25%. If we see it's working, yeah. we'll up the budget about 20 to 25% per ad is what we see. Well, we always work backwards from our CPA, which would be our cost per acquisition. Like what's a comfortable yes. cost per acquisition for you? And this is where, Anthony, you're talking about if you're making $60 off of a yep. new bay cover. You know, yep. you have to know what you're willing to to spend on that. Sometimes that's based off of past performance. We looked at other, you know, performance from other channels. And then you just have to run the ads to get the numbers and the metrics. And I'd love to ask you, Anthony, 
um, you know, what metric should people be, be following, but you just do the math backwards to figure out how much can you spend yeah. for that lead? How much can you spend or how many people do you need to show the ad to, to get them to click through and then how many convert on the landing page? Yeah. So what numbers are you looking at? What should people be tracking? Well, I, th I think one thing that I think most people miss is like, let's just say, again, I'm selling uh, duvet covers isn't a good example of a rear cover. Essentially looking at the lifetime value of that person is a lot of times they'll look at it as the first purchase cost and they'll be like, or the, they won't even look at it as the average order value or something like that. Like, and they'll be like, okay, well, uh, you know, gym memberships, people pay me 20 bucks a month. Like I can only spend 20 bucks to acquire a customer. And I'm like, well, how long do they stay on for? Like, nine months. Okay. So they're not worth 20 bucks to you. They're worth, you know, nine times 20, you know, whatever it is. So that's a, it's a, these are little simple things that I think a lot of people miss and they might come to an agency and they might be like, yeah, you know, I can spend this or they might be trying to, you know, and, uh, and really that's not their LTV. Again, a real estate agent's a great example. Like what's the commission if you bring on one person, okay, five grand and you want to spend 250 bucks and see if this thing works. It doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> to, there's the two X rule again too. I would be comfortable if, if I made ten or five thousand dollars on average commissions as a real estate agent. I would be good spending about ten grand, not per day, not per month, whatever that is. But before I was like, did I get some traction out of this? Did I get some leads? Did I get some quality out of this? Because theoretically, I mean, the goal is is exactly what we're talking about, where you're spending, you're putting a dollar in, you're taking two dollars out, type of thing. But as far as the metrics that that you mentioned, yeah, I think it's it's work backwards from the LTV. So the gym again, hundred eighty bucks. Then I'm looking back and I'm saying, okay, you know, I've, if I've got people coming to my site right now, actually, even before that, every conversation I have, how many conversations does it take to actually turn into a, a, um, an actual, you know, enrollment for us or an actual customer or whatever it is. So mm -hmm. let's say it's one out of every two. So then you're down to 90 per, per lead is what you're looking for. Then you might look at it and be like, okay, what is, you know, just take rough numbers because say, it, you know, 3% of, of people to your site are, are actually, um, uh, going to turn into a, uh, turn into an actual lead. And then you're just working backwards all the way down to the click where now you're like, I can afford to pay this per click. And again, too, that that's, gives it a good pro forma and roadmap. There's a lot of variables at each one of these steps, but at least then in your head, you've got a good pro forma where you're not on Google bidding on, you know, $90 DUI lawyer clicks when you know you really, your pro forma shows you can only spend two bucks on or something like that type of thing. And again, those fluctuate because you could spend more to get someone who converts at a higher rate, who has a higher lifetime value. So, but just being aware of that roadmap and all those, just, just how you just mentioned working backwards, I think gives hopefully a lot of business owners or small business owners the confidence to go out there and actually spend and say, okay, got it. We're hitting these, these early indicator levels. We're getting a good uh, cost per click coming through. We're seeing a decent conversion rate. Okay. You know, maybe it's taking one out of four people I talk to to actually turn into a client of mine, things like that. And you start adjusting the pro forma along the way, but it's better than like, I don't know, uh, 500 bucks guys, let's do that. You know, mm. can you talk a little bit about like the platforms? Because obviously, you know, we were talking a little bit about Facebook, but you're also diversified. Now you're having success yeah. on the other platforms. Can you give a little bit of your thoughts, knowing that our audience is small business owners, insurance yeah. agents, real estate agents, that type of idea. Where would you recommend to them? And, and what do you see advantages, disadvantages to each platform? Yeah, good, good question. So I guess generically speaking, one thing we see across all of the platforms is really the, you know, you have such a small time to gain attention. So what we really split test the hell out of the first three seconds of a video, and it sounds so short and, and crazy, but like we'll have people like start flipping it off or like fire on the screen, like just crazy shit because we're noticing that, you know, on just take Facebook, just, just looking at it holistically, you're, I'm competing with, with your girlfriend, your mom, your best friend, like for your attention, I have to be more relevant and more grabby than that. So a lot of, a lot of small businesses start off with like, do, do, do Anthony's insurance <laughs> company, you know? And then I'm like, so true. I'm like, Hey guys, I'm Anthony and I'm here to talk to you. <laughs> so insurance versus like, I would start off and be like, you're getting screwed and paying $50 more a month on your insurance than you should be. And then like, Hi, I mean, you know what I mean? Like something like that is, I'm see, I see that as a trend across all platforms and, and awesome. no, no matter what you're running uh, is grabbing that attention right off the bat with the benefit. Um, you, you know, I, I, and then as, as far as you're, you're asking, you know, where would I start? I would still, uh, Facebook's very solid. I would say uh, YouTube keyword search intent is very interesting because you're getting a lot of, you know, search intent uh, people, but you're getting it on a video ad unit where you have a much better chance of selling versus you know, me searching uh, DUI lawyer and I've got, you know, 15 people on there to choose from. Right. Now I might target that keyword 
on YouTube and then be showing ads to, to someone who searched something around that, those terms. Uh, and, and now you've got a video ad of why I'm the best DUI lawyer or some shit like that. Um, but I still recommend Facebook, really your current customer list. I would be uh, running a campaign to them to stay relevant in front of them for the intangibles off the platform. I'd be running campaigns to their friends and family. I'd be running a lookalike audience of the people that have made you the most money. Uh, and, and, and that's a solid place to start. And then I would really, it's pretty crazy to me. I continue to get shocked with how much just the creative makes a massive difference. Obviously the audience is very important all these things. The platform is very important, but really, I mean, the, the reality is if I got a billboard in front of it on the side of the highway, again, not now when people aren't driving, that was just like the cr- grab people's attention, had a fucking phenomenal offer. Like that thing's probably going to click, probably still going to work as well too for the cost. So it's, it's really, I, I would focus more on, you know, that creative again to a hook in the first, in the first few seconds, if it is, or something, something that might be outside your comfort zone, as far as like a little bit more, more grabby of an image to, to kind of disrupt the pattern things like that versus like, it's not on brand or it doesn't feel pretty, you know, type of things like let data tell you what's pretty because pretty is green and dollars. It's not, it's not fucking, you know, the color purple that you like better than anybody else. No, that I mean, is, I, I mean, that's a great point because we, we've yeah. done the same thing in our business where we got stuck into that. Well, it's not brand or something like yeah. that, or yeah. it's not, you know, it doesn't match this exact style guide and, and the creative, um, like use the tools to test the different pieces of creative and, and yeah. definitely go outside of your comfort zone from that standpoint. And then also like one thing that we've learned, I don't know if a lot of people know that you can do this. Facebook has, has an ads library. So if you just Google Facebook ads library, you can go look up all of your competitors pages, see what ads yeah. they're running. If someone's been adding a, or running an ad for a while, it's probably working for them because you can see when it was posted, you can see how yeah. long it's been running. It's another great way to kind of learn what the other people are doing and then how to apply that to your message. A hundred percent. And like you said, I mean, even a Google search looking at their lay, you know, everyone who's spending money on Google, like you're really probably doing something right. Cause Google's theoretically the most expensive. So look, opening all those in new tabs and saying, what, what are their hooks on their page? So when I first get to the page, are they, is it a picture of me smiling and, and saying, hi, I do insurance or is it, you know, we save you $50 a month in insurance, you know, and again, to whatever that is, it's like, Ooh, I might want to apply some of that to what I'm doing as well too. So it's, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big believer in not recreating the wheel. I think the, I don't remember who said the quote, but it's um, innovators get slaughtered, disruptors like win or something along those terms where it's essentially like, you know, recreating the wheel. Like you spend countless millions of dollars, thousands of hours. And then I come along and do it 1% better and people choose me instead of you. So, you know, you just, you just to, Facebook to started Facebook, <laughs> Facebook to MySpace. <laughs> you, you got it. I mean, Napster to iTunes, it's the same shit. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? Like there's, there, there's millions of these, you know, examples over and over again, iPhone to the Palm pilot, like all these things and probably something, you know what I mean? Like all these things that, that really, you know, they, they, they had to see would someone actually carry a foreign object in front with them all day long. What a stupid idea that is palm pilot proved it out and then apple came along and made it all pretty and you were like fuck it i like that you know what i mean so yep. um as far as your so and then you you had a question as, as well to luke on the actual platforms where you uh will you say that again too or expand on that as well i can go yeah through. basically you know um when people go like real estate agents are thinking where should i spend their money they're obviously limited in budget mm-hmm. and so you know i agree with you i would encourage people to go to facebook What do you think the advantage though is on Google or YouTube or LinkedIn versus doing it? Like, have you seen any in your business of advantages, disadvantages in each platform? For sure. So I'll go through a handful of them and then I still uh, will uh, caveat them that I still think Facebook, Instagram is the best place to start. So uh, Facebook, I think is still uh, generally the the cheapest. Um, I think there a downfall there is potentially the, intent always isn't always as high or even it's funny, even an Instagram pulling someone off of Instagram to my website, I've noticed the quality of people are much higher just from a platform because the intent's a lot hard. It's a lot harder to pull someone from somewhere. So we started first, like falling into the fallacy that like, Oh, someone's not going to want to get off Instagram or someone's not going to want to get off Snapchat. Like Snapchat doesn't work. And then realizing if I'm able to pull someone off that platform, I've done a really fucking good job and I've got a really good person on my site where a Facebook might be a lot more quick to click and go and accidentally click. And then you end up here and here, you know, so um, that th- those are one, two inherent differences of those platforms. Uh, native ads is, is, you know, people are there to digest long form content and learn. So instead of, again, maybe just a traditional landing page that has, 
you know, designed all pretty. It's, it's an article based type thing where it's more educational. I think it's important to, to realize that the, the difference and the fundamental difference in the platforms, a uh, YouTube generally as people go on there, what are the, what do you go on there for? You go on there to maybe learn how to's you go on there to watch music, you know, things, things like that. So even the uh, how to video, even if you're selling, you know, real estate, agent, how to prep your house or stage your house, so that it sells for more money. Like that's something that will play a lot nicer than, you know, I have 1% commissions off where maybe that looks better on a Google platform. And even just digesting, like how do you search as a consumer? Like go on a search for something. You'll yeah, get on a lot. Nugget. Yeah. You, you'll get on a lot of retargeting, retargeting lists and start seeing people shit show up on your Snapchat, your YouTube, your and be like, I didn't really like that. Like I'm going to watch my Beyonce video or my how to, how to make cooking. Oh, that guy came along. And, and a lot of times I do it in more competitive spaces. Cause I know those are the best marketers, like addiction, legal, like all these, all these, these, these markets that even if I, again, was selling duvet covers, I'm looking at those constantly. Cause I know that's where the best marketers are attracted to. Cause it's the most competitive and it's the most expensive to drive a, uh, uh, actual customer in. So, um, yeah, I mean, I could go all day with the other platforms and shit, but, the, but, the, but, you know, just generically speaking, you know, what, what kind of content do you digest without even, and I'll even forget that I'm digesting a paid ad. Like I'll be like looking on like whatever site I'm on, Fox news, whatever it is, ESP. And then all of a sudden, like I'm reading some other thing. And I'm like, Oh fuck. I just clicked on a tabula ad. And it's like, <laughs> why did I click on that shit? And you're like, Oh, the video is kind of like that. Or it was a girl showing her cleavage. You know, I'm just making silly shit up, but you're like, Oh God. Okay. That might work. Am I my demo? No. Okay. So who is it? You know, so kind of, you know, runs you down that rabbit hole of just thinking like, like, your consumer yourself. So what converts you? Oh man, that's if your target. Most, oh, that's one of the most powerful things that so few people do is, and we do this because like our company specializes mainly in like nurture marketing. Like yeah, it, yeah. we started in the print space, still very popular in print, but we do digital now. And it was like, what I try to tell people is like, Hey, if you received what you're sending to your client right now, and just to make a different salesperson, make it a garage door salesperson. Yeah. Because maybe you're in real estate right now or you're in finance or something like that. Let's say it's a garage door salesman sending you what you're sending to your clients. What would you do? How would yes. you respond to it? And it's like that light bulb. You see the light bulb going up in the brain going, yeah, yeah. Why am I sending that? Mm -hmm. Why am I mm -hmm. sending that email? Because no one ever puts themselves in the consumer shoes yet you're a consumer. You know, and I, you know, to, to your point, I always joke, I always go, when I'm entering a new space, I'm a, I become a method actor in a lot of ways. So for people that aren't familiar, you, you, it's like really putting your, yourself in the shoes. So like, I remember when I was first, you know, helping people get out of debt or medical bills, I purposely defaulted on my medical bills um, so that I would feel what it would feel like to get collection calls to check my, and I started like turning my phone off at night because I didn't want to wake up to collection calls. I started getting anxiety when I went to the mailbox, like all these things. So my competitors are talking about, you know, 35% off where they're like, you know, free consultation. When you call, I'm like, do you want to get rid of that gut in your stomach? Every time you check the mail, like who do you think converts better? Because I felt what it felt like mm. to be my customer. So I think that's very, very important. Even if you're not your customer, it's just really putting yourself in the shoes of the customer, like going five levels deeper, like, okay, so they don't, they don't like, okay, so what happens when you don't pay your shit? Okay. You get collection notices. So what happens when you get collection notices, you get calls, you get letters in the mail. So what happens? Sometimes when you get calls, you get letters in the mail. You don't want to pick up your phone. You don't want to go in the box. So what happens if you don't want to get, and then all of a sudden you're down to like, holy fuck. Like if I'm talking to a dude, his wife's going to divorce him. And you're like, save mm. your, save your marriage by calling. And they're like, the fuck am I even calling? <laughs> call for, call for auto insurance. You know what I mean? Like, like it, it's true though. That's where you're psychologically pulling strings and hitting on people to where they're actually yeah. disrupting them, taking action, things like that. Well, that goes down to the fundamental sales principle, man, of like logic convinces emotion yeah. causes people to take action. So yeah. you, you have to have logic and credibility and all those yes. things that build that. But if you're not tugging at the heartstrings of what causes yeah. people to want to overcome, what is it that Tony Robbins says? It's fulfilling people's greatest desire or solving their greatest pain. So yes. if you have to figure out one of those two things in what you're trying to do. And he talks about in terms of building a great business. It's like, you got something to build a business there. Yeah. But yeah, in advertising, it's the same fundamentals there. The I mean, that's so awesome. Yeah. I love that. And a lot of it's on the, on the pain side too, right? Like if I'm like, hey, you want to look good and get all the girls. Or I'm like, yo, you're tired of people fucking looking down on you because you're slightly over, because you're over, because you're in that donut. You know, like that pain generally a lot more people. Like you're like, even if you're not out of shape, you're like, 
ooh, I don't want to get looked down on versus like, get all the girls, get the nice car. It's like you're tired of driving that piece of shit car that breaks down every 10 seconds or you don't know the next time you're going to be able to afford to get gas in the car because your finances aren't in order. You know what I mean? So yeah, essentially like to your point, really understanding like who that demo is because then, I mean, you could be the, you could be on the dumbest, again, you could be on a billboard on the side of the road. You could have the fucking worst everything, worst branding, worst whatever. But if people are fucking calling you four times, they're like, dude, he's not picking up the phone. They're not picking up the phone. Picking up the phone. Like you've got them on an emotional high. And when you think about any big purchases you've made as a consumer, again, looking back at yourself, they're all emotional. Like even when you're going to buy a TV, why are you in that TV? You're like, oh, yeah. I want my boys to come over. Okay. You want to watch the game. I want to feel more like a man. Like I want my space, you know, like, and when you start digesting that, you're like that all went through your head in a, in a 10th of a second what the hell do you think is happening when your customer is thinking about calling you to mow their lawn or some shit like that? You know what I mean? Freaking love this. Josh and I were just talking about this with the webinar we're doing on branding Mm -hmm. and and talking about like Nike doesn't run commercials about how they have better shoes than Adidas. Right. They don't do that. Like they, they, they trigger you to the emotion of these athletes running and and all this stuff that that gets you emotionally charged up. Um, because they know that's ultimately like, it's a mind share game today. It's right. a mind share game because what is the stat, Josh? Is it 76%? I can't remember the exact stat. I'll have to get fact checked on this. It's, uh, it's in the 70s, but 70% of people will use the first name they think of, the first person. Yeah. So whoever you think, when you think insurance, if you've done a good enough job with your, now, of course you want direct response. We all want that as marketers. We all want the people to see the ad, click the button, go to it, buy. It doesn't always happen that way, but it's that, it's that mind share that you're building. And if you can be first, I mean, your chances are set in the 70 percentile of they're going to choose you. If I say airline tickets, whoever you think of first right now. Yes you're going to go probably to them, whether it's, it's American, true. Delta, or whatever it is. So how do you be first? And, and how do you do both good marketing from a branding side, but at the same time from a direct response? You seem to have mastered this direct response game. I mean, just from what you're, you're saying, you produce a mil or you have a million customers a year. Yes, correct. Yeah. And a, and a lot of that is, is because to your point, it's, it's, we, we actually focus very little on branding and we get very, not that we should or shouldn't be. I think that's actually a downfall of us. Cause I think we're lear- we're, we're losing a lot of, of, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for here? Not multiplier effect, but essentially, uh, uh intangibles or spillover benefits to, to not being as much brand. But like when I'm running to auto insurance and I'm saying, you know, divorcemoms.com or something like that. And, and it's a divorce mom going on, look, going on there crying how her auto insurance was too high because after her divorce, blah, blah, blah. Like I'm very hard. I'm very strategically nichely pulling on an emotional string and answering someone's, you know, emotional needs uh, at a very deep level. And that's where I think the direct response starts to come in a lot more. And to your point, branding is not always who spends more. Branding could be, is, is, you know, I remember the video ad again too. I wasn't sure what insurance I was going to go with or anything, but I remember the video ad of the, you know, the single mom also, you know, crying on camera that, that, you know, she, she, she couldn't, she felt like she couldn't even afford her health insurance or whatever it is, you know? And like, that's the first brand that pop, might pop in your head, like that video or that company, not necessarily Geico, who Geico spends $1 trillion more than me, you know? And, and uh, uh, but that brand was a psychological pull enough of a brand. So it's not always, I think people are confused with brand being <clears throat> spending a lot of money, being everywhere and then being pretty. That's not, that doesn't always equal brand. It's so crazy when I think about like lead generation, like I'm trying to summarize this. If like you're a real estate agent right now, right? And you're thinking, hey, I'm listening to this. I want to start advertising. I want to start getting these leads. We're saying, hey, the best place is probably to start is Facebook and Instagram. Budget wise, you want at least 50% of what your lifetime value of a client would be from a spend perspective. What type of ad like from an ad perspective, because that's where I think people get hung up. Like if I'm yeah. trying to summarize and follow through the process, okay, I'm going to start on Facebook and Instagram. I'm budget wise. I'm going to look at, you know, and with the real estate, it's hard because they make so much from a customer. Uh, but let's just say I'm going to start with a hundred bucks, 20 bucks on my ad. Okay. And I go in and now I have to create the ad. <laughs> should I like a type of ads that I should create can you give me some idea? Like, is it, should it be a lead magnet type ad where they have to get information? 
give give some thought there on the ad they should create. At that point. Yeah, so there's a book. It's by a guy named Jay Bear. It's called Utility. Y O U Utility. Uh, it's it's kind of older at this point, but it's actually a customer service social media book. But I think it's one of the best sales books because what it talks about is helping, not selling. So he literally has a real estate agent example in there. <clears throat> and what the example is, is it's a mom that had two or three kids and she found a Facebook group that was for new moms. And all she did in there was educate on how to be a great new mom. And that's all she spent all day on. And um, she, I think like, I th- want to say the number was like 25 extra business in 12 months just from that group. And it was like a local mo- new moms group. Um, <clears throat> and the reason was because uh, a couple things. One is, uh, guess what happens when you have a kid? Probably want to get a bigger home because you need that. So got it. That's the right there in the market. Um, and she wasn't coming in and saying, I'm a real estate agent. I'm a real estate agent. Sign up with me. Sign up with me. She's adding value. She was saying, hey, here's how to be a good new mom. Oh, and by the way, I'm a real estate agent. So call it, you know, one out of every four pokes conversations was like an ask or something like that. Or I love that. value, value, value. <clears throat> so to answer your question, apply that principle to a, a specific niche to someone who is like in that case, someone who's a, a new parent is probably going to want to up, upsize their house, whatever the right fucking real estate term is for that. I don't know. Uh, get, get a bigger home. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I would make my ad creative specific around that because, and you know, look through Facebook, you can literally Google Facebook targeting options. Oh, oh, new, just married or just birthday or what, you know, whatever it is. And then my creative would be specific to that person. So I'm talking, I'm searching, I'm checking only males and I'm checking, uh, you know, there are only females. They had to just have a kid. Uh, I'm just making shit up at this point. I fucking have a college degree. And then my ad is something like, and I'm being super, super silly with this, but are you a, a newborn mom uh, that, you know, uh, that, that, that also has a college degree? Like, I'm the real estate agent for you. Like just that all of a sudden you're like, <gasps> like if, if someone, if someone came to, it was like, Hey, are, you know, are you, are you a business owner in your twenties? That's looking to triple your business uh, and, and do it without pulling your hair out. And I'm like, how do you know <laughs> me? You know? So I would be that drilled down versus, and you, you can with Facebook, you can select those options and look through on top of, you know, look alike at your best customers, things like that. But I'd select a few people, boom, 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 boom then my ad would be very, very specific to that niche. If I've only got a hundred dollars to spend, you can be that specific too. And I would just, and I would talk in terms of that person. So I'm a newborn mom. God, are you freaking out because you don't know where you're going to put your kids, lie your head, your, your baby's head at night or where they're going to grow up in? Are they going to grow up in a stable home and actually not grow up to be a drug addict? You know, I'm being obviously super dramatic. You know what I mean? Like that's the type of shit that like that, that hundred dollars. I think there's a great point in there, man, that like that tr- drama i guess is maybe the right word to say is that that drama that is what catches people That's like true. josh knows this about me like i always want to be clickbaitier like i always want it to be more aggressive or more like it's not out there enough like in our ads to pull people in but it doesn't have to be like aggressive from a standpoint of like you mentioned like the cleavage and stuff like that because i think we see a lot of clickbait ads like that it doesn't have to be like that but for us it's like when we switch our marketing to where we were trying to go and give our sales pitch through marketing of, Hey, we get you past the trash can and all this stuff. It wasn't working really at all. And then all of a sudden when we started doing this beautiful image of a person on our actual magazine, it was like the most elegant marketing or, you know, the classiest way to like that all of a sudden got all the response because it touched on the vein, I think, and Josh be interested to hear what your thoughts are and what vein it touched on. But I think it touched on, the, on people's vanity on, they want to look great. People want to look great. If they're a business owner, a real estate agent and their face is out there. Ego. Dead. You topped right into their ego. Yeah. Right. At, right into the ego. You said, yeah, I'm yep. going to put you up. You, and you indirectly said, I'm going to put you on front, in front of a magazine, which yep. is, uh, you know, real estate agents, theory, you know, uh, if I'm summing them up, I have a high ego. So it's just, it's just like, you know, the easiest sale ever for a lawyer was like, Hey, I'm going to put your face on all the retargeting display ads. They're like, fucking how much money was it? Take it, take it, take it. They're, you know, give it, give it. They're on fucking real estate agents are on bus stops and shit. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing on a bus stop, dude? Oh, your ego. Cause you like to drive by and be like, Hey, I'm Camelback in 64. It's look at my fucking face. Like who the fuck's hiring a luxury realtor off a bus stop? You know what I mean? But it's the ego to your point. Yeah. You tapped into it dead on. You, I love tap, it. you tap into that emotion. You tap into It's like find the emotion of your consumer. That is the true takeaway there is find the emotion that it's like you said, are you a 20 year old business owner that's trying to triple your business, but pulling your hair out? Like you feel that pain. Josh really feels that pain. I mean, just, no. 
I have no hair to pull out. <laughs> I got this Beard, like, bro. shine, though. Beard. Uh, Josh is the brains. That's why. No, nah, man, I love that. Tapping in and understand. What you call the acting? What, what was that? Meth me method acting. I'll have to look at the exact definition of it. Method Heath, acting. I think Heath that Ledger is a good example. Great, great example of Heath Ledger when he played the Joker. Ended up killing himself. He got, he got too far into it. But uh, literally locked himself in a hotel room for like three weeks to make himself literally – fucking nuts so when he played the joker he came off as a fucking psychopath because he literally turned himself into a psychopath Dude, probably too far not not telling you to do that but like hey, yeah, don't do that people but that is nuts but that that's interesting method acting i'm gonna have to look into that a little yeah, bit yeah. but I, I think that is a huge takeaway is is tapping into your buyer's pain your your client's pain all right i gotta ask you this man knowing what you know now right you're super young so how, how old are you 29 29 yeah you did dude you're 29 super successful so I want to ask, like, what would you go back, you know, let's say it was even just 10 years ago, right? 12 years. What would you go back? What advice would you give your, your younger self? Yeah, big clicking point for me was, like, I had a mentor years ago that uh, basically said, he said, if, if you can't make $100,000 at a sales job, I will personally shoot you in the fucking face with a gun. And I was like, what? And he's like, basically, there's no risk. So, essentially, what I would tell my younger self is, like, I'm going to be okay. I know how to talk and how to sell. Like, me taking a risk on my business and making long-term investments really is not a risk or wasn't a risk. Cause I always felt like I could go get a, a normal job as a backfall or things like that. So what that means tactically is making, I would tell myself to make long-term investments in myself, in my business and the things I'm doing. So it gets back to the real estate agent. That's like, Hey guys, I'll give you 250 bucks to, to play with my shit. Cause like, I just want to make sure that like, I can still go get my nails done and my yoga thing. And then, and you're like, Versus like, hey guys, I can afford a $5,000 customer acquisition cost. Let's go spend that. See if we can even have a solid conversation with someone. That's a win for us. So like those types of, that was a massive turning point in me, my business, my success was essentially making long-term investments and thinking more long-term. So even when I have someone fuck up, like I had one guy like misspend like $30,000 in like an hour. And instead of being like, you fucking idiot. I was like, hold on long-term. What does this do to him? If I go, what the fuck's wrong with you? He's scared now. He's scared. And he's nervous to spend. He's nervous to do things. So instead I said, great job, bro. And he's like, what? Like he was like, he, go, he told me, he was like literally throwing up the night before he was sick to tell me the next morning. And I was like, dude, you fail being aggressive. That's what I want all day, baby. I was like, let's do it. Let's do it. Actually fucking kill it. I love that. I misspent money before too. Hell yeah. So now when he goes to scale shit and do budgets, he's not, he's not trigger happy, trigger shy. And this is a media buyer that's been with me for years now that, that manages millions of dollars. If in that moment I took the short term out, I was like, bro, what the fuck? I'm taking some out of your salary, fucking this, 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 like most people would react. I would have killed his ability to spend at a high scale and have that high, uh, you know, risk tolerance to spend. Cause now he's trigger shy. And he's like, I don't want to launch that ad. It might fail. It's kind of out on a limb. So I'd, I, you know, so essentially that's what I would tell my, my younger self was make, make long-term investments in myself, in my business and, and know it's going to be okay. It's going to work out in some way. If not, I've got a pretty uh, very low risk fallback, which is to go get a normal fucking job. Man, that's that so good, yeah. man. That, uh, final question, Anthony. What is a duvet, and why does it need a cover? <laughs> <laughs> it's a yeah. Uh, it's it's a very expensive fucking piece of shit uh, cover to your uh, uh, comforter blanket. I think you, so. Anyway. <laughs> All right, man. Like, no, I'm sorry that my girlfriend said I needed to get. There you go. That's the story. <laughs> that's that's your next dad. Did your girlfriend say you need a duvet cover? No, thanks for being here. Before we close, uh, let people know how they can find you, what your Instagram is, what your site is, all that good stuff. Sure. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty active on Instagram. If you want to hit me up with any questions or anything like that, you can Google my name too. And I have uh, you know, a website you can just contact form. I do this all as a give back. I listen to fucking hundreds of hours, thousands of hours of this shit to learn some of the stuff I know now. So uh, anyway, I can help any questions I can answer. I, I try and get back to almost every single person, even if it takes me a few days or shit like that. So feel free to reach out. Anyway, I can help. I'd love to. Awesome. And your website is anthonysarandrea.com. Yeah, right? that's perfect. Yep. That works. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. To dive deeper into this episode, get all of the links that we mentioned. And to see the video, you can head on over to statepaidpodcast.com. And we ask that you support the show in two ways. First way is to go over Raiders on iTunes. James Festini was on the podcast and he rated us on iTunes. It says, uh, I can't remember what it said. It said, Festini says this is great. Right? And then the, <laughs> the comment was, so it has to be. That might be the ego, James Festini. I like <laughs> the ego. 
<laughs> he had his own name in our in our review. I love and, it. Uh, that is the best way to support the show. We really appreciate it. We love bringing this show to you guys. We love bringing people like Anthony on to share their expertise with you as well. So that's the way to give back. And then the other way is to just tell a friend, share this on your social media, share it with a friend, let someone else know about it, especially if you've got someone right now who is looking for a way to generate leads, looking to get into Facebook advertising, but doesn't know where to start. Anthony shared a wealth of knowledge here and offered up his help even on, uh, if, if you want to hit him up on Instagram and ask him anything there. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com. Or you can find us on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Syke. Guys, and I'm Luke Aker. As you can tell, man, Anthony's knowledge, I, I feel like we barely tapped in. I mean, I feel like there's just a trove of knowledge that we very barely tapped into. So check this guy out on Instagram. Super appreciative of him coming on. The action item I want to give you guys, I think will be super beneficial for you, is I really think you need to look at your transactions that you did this past year. And look at those people and go, what is unique or different? Or what is it about these people that, have, that you have started working with them? What is it the thing that they have that you can tap into? Call it this method acting. What is it that you now can tap in and understand your buyer at a deeper level? And I've heard in real estate, a really good thing to do when it comes to your marketing is look at where all of the houses that you've sold are in the past before, because what you'll see is a trend of where you've actually started to build your brand and you've started to get some traction. And I think the same can be done when you look at all of the people you've worked with, you can start writing down the characteristics about them. And I guarantee you, you're going to start seeing a theme there. And then that theme is you need to go deep. I mean, I'm not talking about Heath Ledger deep here, but you need to go deep with this and understand what is the true pain point that I'm solving for these buyers. Then look at your marketing and do an audit of your marketing and go, does my marketing, my copy, my imagery, does it portray the pain points that I've helped these people solve? Or does it portray the satisfaction, the desires that I've helped fill, fulfill for them? That's the action item I want you to do on this podcast is I want you to look back at all your buyers and all the sellers that you've had, all the people you've worked with and go, hey, what's the common theme I see here? Remember, the difference between a top producer and a mediocre producer in every single business Josh and I have worked in is top producers take action. So take action on that today.